Alright guys, so today what we're gonna, there's been some talk, or I read some talk on the internet about uh, parallax and aim points. Uh, of course you may have heard some of the recent issues discovered in the EOTEX. Uh, so there was some discussion about the aim points and parallax, some new red dots coming out on the market and how they stack up and uh, whatnot. If you're not sure what parallax is, uh, do a Google search. Uh, I'm not going to really sit here and try to explain it, but basically... Uh, when you're looking through your optic uh, on a magnified powered optic that's why it's important to have a good consistent cheek, uh, cheek weld to your stock so that you're looking through your optic from the same point every time otherwise what you see may not be what you actually get so I do know the aim points have some parallax uh, at close yardages uh, supposedly I believe around 50 yards are supposed to be parallax free I'm not 100% sure on that so don't quote me on it uh, but what we're going to do today is we're going to actually give this, uh, uh, we're going to actually test this out. So what we're going to do is we're going to fire uh, two rounds at this dot uh, from 10 yards aiming in properly. We'll mark those uh, where they hit and then I'm going to put the dot in the 12 o'clock position inside the tube aiming in on this mark here again and fire two. I'll come down and mark them. I'll put the dot at the 3 o'clock in the tube aiming in, uh, then the 6 and the 9 uh, and we'll see how much difference we have between what we're seeing and what we're actually getting. Uh, I'm not going to actually video the shooting because I'm not going to bore you with that, uh, but uh, I am going to, you can see the target here, uh, this is going to be 10 yards, we're going to do this one from 25 yards, and this one will be from 50 yards, uh, and I'm, I'm going to mark, uh, I'll come down and mark the shots in between the, uh, the positions in the tube so that so that we don't get everything all screwed up. And we'll see if there's any uh, any noticeable difference, if it's something we need to be concerned with, or uh, or if it's much ado about nothing. So uh, next thing you'll see, uh, next time I start up the camera, it'll be, uh, the shots will be on target, and they'll be marked, uh, and we'll, we'll go from there. All right, guys, uh, we're back with the results. I apologize that this looks pretty uh, messy, so I'll try to just point out what we got going on here. So at 10 yards, uh, our first two shots uh, landed right where the tip of my marker is. And as you can see, when we held at the extreme 12, 9, 6, and 3 o'clock, the shots deviated no more than uh, actually less than a half of an inch uh, at 10 yards. So virtually no consequence whatsoever at 10 yards. Uh, at 25 yards, again, our first two shots are right where the tip of the pin is. And again, our shots deviated uh, about maximum of a, uh, looks like a half inch, maybe just under three quarters of an inch off center. Um, also keep in mind guys when I'm doing this, I'm actually having to lift my head from the stock or, or whatnot to get the dot that far out in the tube. Uh, and it's, it's actually uncomfortable trying to hold it there, so I'm not going to be as steady shooting in that uh, position. Uh, but again, no real consequence for all practical purposes. You're, you're still within the kill box on a headshot. Uh, from 50 yards, uh, again, our first two shots landed right in, uh, where my pin tip is, right here. And then we actually had, uh, for the most part, at least one round from each grouping, if you can call that, uh, landed in our, our orange here. And then we had one kicked out, and that might have been just due to me. And, uh, along with the dispersion of the rifle. Like, I'm, I'm really, I, I have to struggle to kind of hold the dot in those extreme positions. Uh, it's not very comfortable, but uh, I'll put my fist up here. You can see I cover it with my fist. So uh, I tried again from 50, uh, this time just holding on the center of the head uh, just to see. Uh, and essentially we got, um, I'll put this uh, magic marker up here so you can get a, an understanding. Almost every round landed in the A zone on this uh, Ipsy target. Uh, in fact, only one round straight outside the A zone on the headshot or the head box on the Ipsy target. So, you know, is the aim point parallax free? Um, for practical purposes, I would say yes. Uh, from, a, from a practical point of view, uh, considering I'm literally struggling to hold the dot that far out in the tube, uh, from a zeroing purpose, uh, I would say you definitely still need to apply your fundamentals when you zero. Uh, to ensure you're getting a good cheek weld so you can get a good, nice center zero. Uh, but otherwise, uh, for the most part, if, you're if you see that, you know, put the dot on the target within these 
combat ranges, uh, you should be getting a hit on, on all practical size targets. Uh, again, we kept every round except just this one here, which actually is still in line, but it's a little low, and that could be me. It could be dispersion, you know, who knows. But at any rate, inside that A. So what we're going to do, we're going to tape these up, and we're going to go back to the 100-yard line, and I'm just going to try to hold center and do repeat the same thing from the 100 and just see if we keep it inside the A zone on this Ipsy target or how far off we stray. Keeping in mind, I'm using a M855 ball, uh, and out of this rifle, you know, this ammo is honestly for 10 shot groups uh, is usually about, it can vary from about three to almost four MOA. Uh, it just, it's not the most consistent in accuracy terms. Uh, and this is going to be representative of a 10 shot group with poor fundamentals because we're going to be pushing the dot out to the extreme. So do keep that in mind when you're seeing, when you're seeing this. All right, guys, we're done with the 100-yard shoot. Uh, I held as best I could center, or what I could tell is center. Obviously, this is cardboard on cardboard, so uh, I could kind of make out this region here I was holding here. Uh, and it looks like uh, we had a couple shots that strayed to the outside of our grouping, uh, but all are still inside the A zone on this Ipsy target. Uh, bear in mind uh, that I'm forcing the dot to the far outer edges in the tube, uh, not when I'm sighting on here. So the dot may be in the tube at, say, the far extreme 12 o'clock, but I am still holding center. Okay, so just keep that in mind of this is what's going on here. And trying to hold that dot that far out on, on the edges in the tube is actually a little difficult. It's quite uncomfortable. Uh, it doesn't lend to a, a stable shooting platform. Um, and uh, it's more of just an extreme circumstance of if you're shooting from an unconventional position, you can't get quite behind the rifle. Keep in mind that iron sights in my head position, in order to get the dot that far out, iron sights would have been useless, uh, and magnified optics would have been useless. Uh, so this is an advantage of the red dot sight, uh, in my opinion. And uh, if you look at this, we're still in a combat effective area, uh, regardless of where that dot is in that tube. Uh, and ultimately, that's one of the big advantages to red dot sight. Now, some of you might be concerned about this. Maybe you have a red dot sight that you think doesn't have uh, any parallax effect. Uh, you know, I, I don't know. From what I've seen, most are going to suffer from a little. This does not concern me because it's still within a combat effective zone. The only thing I'll say is when you do zero, you will want to use good fundamentals and get a proper uh, cheek and head position on your, on your stock and be consistent so that you get a good zero to minimize these effects. Uh, but again, consider, remember this is, the dot is pushed to the extreme outer edge, 12, 9, 6, and, uh, or 12, 3, 6, and 9 o'clock. Uh, I'm holding the dot on the extreme outer edge in the tube and then attempting to aim center. Uh, and that's kind of difficult to actually hold it that far out. So this is sort of the maximum effect. As the dot comes closer to center, this effect will lessen uh, to the point where obviously it wouldn't even be noticeable. So this personally does not concern me from a practical point of view of what red dots are supposed to be used for. Uh, maybe this concerns you. Uh, comment below. Let, let me know what you think. Do you have any experience? Uh, have you ever tried this with your optics? What optics did you use? Did you see a greater variance or less variance? Um, and overall what you think about this. Uh, we got some more stuff coming up in future videos so don't forget to subscribe. Like the video if you like the content and please do comment below. Alright guys, thanks.